So you you alluded a little bit to your relationship with Brazil and with O Grande Ojin, uh, who was on on the podcast a couple of days ago. Um, let's let's go, man. What is your interest in Brazil? How did this start? Um, and what, what's your background? Because uh, we haven't even explored your background as a musician. Um, mm. So if you could let us know about that. How, how, how do music and then Brazil enter into your life? Yeah, no, this is, I love talking about this. Uh, so I've been playing percussion since I was in fifth grade, like all the way through school and, and through university. I studied percussion uh, and got a percussion performance degree from the University of Colorado. But it was at university uh, here in Boulder that I joined the Brazilian Bateria, uh, who was taught by my good friend and teacher, Carl Dixon. So that was my first exposure to samba and Brazilian music was playing in the Bateria. And we would play around town. And he's kind of helped develop like Colorado Bra Brazil Fest and his band Jinga, they play a lot. And so like there is a little bit of a Brazilian influence here in, in Boulder. There's a little bit of a scene. And so, uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed the music, connected with it. The rhythmic and dance elements of samba were like really compelling to me. I ended up, like, my senior thesis project, like, a lot of it was with Brazilian music. So that's where I just started playing and, and learning from Carl, like, teaching me how to play these different rhythms on the different instruments. Um, so that, that had that seed planted, but that happened, long, like, well before I met anyone, well well before I met Ocean. Um But that's sort of, like, my music career. Uh, alongside studying Brazilian music, I was also playing a lot of jazz so those are kind of the two things that i was really passionate about and uh my friend thomas woodson and i w one day had this idea to make sort of a visual concert like a film that would be a visual concert that was a interpretation a musical interpretation of what i would hear to myself like out running through the hills so that was kind of the inspiration for the tempo films was this idea of like combining my two passions into one sort of, yeah, visual experience where totally improvisational, like playing and running together. And so that, that film, the first tempo took place here in Boulder. It's on YouTube, but it, it, it sort of is an expression of the type of running that I was talking about earlier in our conversation about moving fluidly over different types of technical terrain, whether that's on rocky trails or technical yeah technical trails or like moving up onto like the flat irons and doing some climbing or whatnot so that film came out this is a couple years after graduating university and ocean saw that film and and sent me a message on instagram like oh wow this idea of running and drumming and, and percussion in the same film really resonates with me like i really connect with this i i play music and run myself like, thank you for sharing, or I forget exactly what he said, but it was, you know, like, super, super nice message. And I was like, wow, like, this is the first time I'd ever met someone from, truly from Brazil. And it was just, like, kind of random, but also not. But it was like, that seed had been planted. And uh, I, I replied and was like, oh, like, it would be my dream one day to come do, like, another tempo film, but have you be the main character and sort of show us what music and running looks like for you, like, where you live in Santa Teresa and, and the jungle or whatnot. And so that was, like, the block and the whole project was going down there and running with Ocean and playing music with him. It was, like, that whole idea is that message that he sent about how he embodies sort of the similar passions that I have with, with music and running, uh, but yeah, it was like a kind of a full circle moment for me is like learning how to play that music and then like all the way to meeting Ocean to going down there. It was like, yeah, just a, a full circle experience where when I first started playing in the Bateria, I was like, I, who knows where this will take me? I just wanted to do it because it was fun. And I had some friends in there and we were, it was just like you're dancing and playing. It's like a good time. Uh, so yeah, it was just, it's fun to see how like the different dots connect, you know, sometimes when you first do something, you don't know where it's going to put you. And so it's something I'll never forget is that like progression of like, okay, you do this and then this happens and then you meet this person and it's like, 
yeah, it's just a, a perfect example of why like the beauty of life and how like making connections, it's like that, that amazing feelings you get when you make these connections. I want to get into your time in Brazil, but first, I w mm. what was it like presenting the idea of this project? Because in the end, it was sponsored by, by Black Diamond. What was that process like presenting this project um, and getting their support for this project? What was that process like? Yeah, no, that's that's a really important question. So they were, they've been fully on board with this whole idea of music and running since the first film. And so when I presented the second idea of like going to Brazil, I mean, it was like a home run. Like they, you know, like Jaws hit the floor. Like they're, they love the idea. Like there is no hesitations, no questions, no like, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about my relationship with Black Diamond is they, they fully support me and my ideas to like, do running films a different way to try to just do something unique and cut away from the mold of like, Oh, this man runs the fastest time up the mountain and he conquers the mountain. And it's like this flex of the ego. And it's like, that's just not what my vision for running is. And so they, they were on board 100% from the start. Like, yeah, it was incredible. Like it, it couldn't, couldn't have gone any better. Really. It was, it was perfect. Honestly. So you come down, people listening in Brazil, well, Ojin is in, he's in the city, he's in Santa Teresa, um, he's Carioca through and through in his accent and everything. Um, you arrive in Brazil, what, what are your impressions? What was it like taking, taking in the city and taking in the culture here? I mean, it was, it was pretty wild. Like, it's not like anything I've ever experienced, like from the humidity to the jungle, to the people, to the city it was just like very vibrant and sort of just like, Oh, you're in it. Like you're, you're in the city. Like, so I don't know, like that's the easiest way I can to describe it. It's like, you have no choice, but to be just fully immersed in what's going on. Like, I think what I found really fascinating is how the jungle in the city is like they're kind of like fighting each other and, and, and in the first act of the film my ocean's in this kind of like abandoned like coffee mill like where they used to like I guess yeah make coffee or it's like this ancient ruin kind of building and it's like this idea that the jungle is like expanding you know it's like the roots and the vines through the cracks in the sidewalk it's like the the nature is there but it you can easily forget about it and just be in the full city mode but then if you kind of step back you're like you see like where nature is like kind of fighting to cling on to like the urban interface there. And so I think the beautiful thing about what we experienced in Santa Teresa is that like being in that vibrant neighborhood, the culture there, but then quickly being able to escape up into the jungle on like Ocean's daily runs where he goes running every day and like kind of be by yourself, but then be back in the city. And it's like that pretty it's a position between those is fascinating how like one second you can be just like sweating like crazy deep in in this like forested area and then next second pop out and you're like oh it's like let's get, grab some acai and and just like chill on the sidewalk and hang out it's like in some ways it, yeah it was like brought me like similar feelings to like living in boulder where you you're in a city but you can find these little escapes go up into the mountains go to the jungle um I mean, I absolutely loved, I loved it. Like the food, the culture, the people, the music, like I, I'll go back in a heartbeat. I want to go back so bad. Um, I mean, I definitely had like the stereotypes that people hear about Brazil and all those things, but we didn't really, I didn't experience that. I didn't, nothing but like friendly people. It, it, it was an amazing experience. Like I, I loved it there. Um, and I, I know I saw just a very, very, very small portion of Brazil. It kind of, blows my mind how big brazil is like when you think about it like going over into the more mountainous regions just the different regions it's like they're they're far away like rio is i don't know like i still wrap my head around like how big your country is like it's it's huge <laughs> yeah it, it's i mean i i actually I, I grew up on the east coast in the u.s and um it was I think I was 25 the first time I was in Colorado 
or even older. And it, 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 mm. people forget that it, when it's another country, it's another it, in Brazil, like where I am. Sometimes people in the U.S. would be like, oh, the Amazon. I'd be like, yeah, that's not has nothing to do with my life. And I have where been are there, you again? It was out of my own personal interest. I'm in Belo Horizonte. Um, it's kind of it's kind of mid in the mountains in Brazil. It's about four hour drive from Rio from where you were. Um, but it, it's more in the mountains. Yeah. I mean, culturally, uh, it's more like a, I would, I would say, or culture, the identity within the country, it's more like a Virginia or a, a Wyoming, maybe, <laughs> of, of, the, of the country. Okay. Um, but it's, uh, it's a little bit different, but a lot of things you said definitely strike true. And definitely Ojin, his, his, his relationship with Parky, uh, Shizuka, uh, the Floresta there, that's his green mountain. Um, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it has a very special place in his heart. 